Let us all that we can to build a better future. All right. With that being said, Daniel, we're going to be um, moving on to our next story. Uh, you have a story for people. What's going on, man? Yes, yeah, so I thought I'd give like a slightly positive story. I don't think it goes all the way. I don't think it's grand systemic across the country, but to some degree it is. And uh, this has to do with um, John Deere and John Deere accessories. And, you know, they've been on strike uh, about 10,000 workers or so for uh, quite a bit of time. They reached a deal. And there's a little news report that'll go over it, and you can check out this during the links below. It's really not any different in writing. They basically just transcripted what we're about to see here. But the strike is over, they held firm, and they have gotten some co pretty meaningful concessions. It's not, a, you know, it's not as much as I think a lot of us would be happy they went, but it's something. Let's take a look at the video. The future impact of the John Deere strike. Now that the company has a new contract with the United Auto Workers, a labor will have, will have a lasting, lasting effect on not, not only our community, community, but the nation. Good evening, I'm David Nelson. TV6's Monsey Rakosa explains why the Deere contract is viewed as a victory for everyone involved. John Deere proposed three contracts. The first, only 10% of United Auto Workers approved. The second was approved by 45%, and the third finally ratified by 61%. This is a victory uh, for a lot of people. It's a victory for deer workers, certainly, uh, because they stood up for themselves and for future generations to protect good jobs in our communities. Um, they got a better contract than they would have gotten without the strike, and they stuck together as a, as a union throughout the strike. UAW standing on the picket line for 35 days, asking for things like better wages and health care plans. Not only did this negotiation help Deer employees, but possibly others nationwide. This is part of this national uprising that has taken place since COVID, where workers all over the country in organized and unorganized ways have said, we're not going to go back to the way that employers were treating us before COVID. Mm -hmm. That employers have to treat us with respect, have to provide us with pay and benefits that allow us to support ourselves, and have to provide us safe work environments. As over 10,000 Deer employees return to the facilities, they may expect the environment to feel a little different. So usually after a strike, morale is actually actually better than it was before the strike because before the strike, there's this pent up feeling that, that you, you maybe couldn't have gauged that people were just dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And now maybe you haven't satisfied everything, but you've gotten yourself a lot closer to what is what you consider a fair relationship both Deere and UAW calling this agreement, quote, groundbreaking and ready to get their employees back to work. In the Quad Cities, Monserricosa, okay, TV6 right there. News. Six year con. Okay, I wanna, just the reason I wanna pause it is, and we're gonna keep playing the rest of it, it's actually the most important stuff happens now. Uh, FaZe, can you tell me how far in the video we are? Okay, two minutes, 35 seconds in. That's what we've just seen. How much is the total video length? Two minutes, 51. So everything we heard was more or less just noise. Let's play what actually got they got out of this, this which is stuck at the very end of the video. Contract which affects more than 10,000 employees includes several things that Iverson notes as impressive, including the cost of living adjustments, which will take inflation into account. Health care is free for employees as well, something Deere says is practically unheard of in this day and age. So there you go. This again, this is what we've been talking about with unions. And it's, it's, it's something as much as I'm really happy with the UAW for what they did, and they should be really proud for doing the stuff that they're doing. Uh, this is kind of like a downside of the current unions is that it's all focused around health care costs, which is not that good in the scheme of things that you want to ask for. But nonetheless, they got COLA increases that are based on inflation, which is great, wonderful, especially now with the way inflation's working. I think they also didn't mention that everyone gets starting bonuses. They now have retirement packages. I'm sort of annoyed that like a condensed video like that that comes out 
like it still doesn't even talk about all the stuff they got out of it. It's like the you the work's gone. Everyone can get back to work. Without not going fully into what that actually means. And they got a little more. They got some bonuses and stuff, and they think they got their payback for the time that they were striking. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Aspen Fallen. Uh, free healthcare, 10 to 20% raises, uh, $8,500 starting bonuses. Wonderful. I'm glad this happened. This is an example of a strike holding firm and working. And people got a lot out of it. People are actually, again, I think the fact that they have free health care is really big. Now, every John Deere employee is basically for Deere Care for All or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think this is good. And I think that this gives other places that are considering striking more impetus to do so. Now, this is, again, this is like UAW. They have a lot more funds that they can bring. They can pay people while this all this is happening. But... I don't know. I, I feel that this is good. I feel this is positive. I don't feel it's all the way. But in this sea of terrible things that we've been covering for years, 10,000 people getting better wages and being happy about it, that's something. You know, I also want to add in something else, too. They held. They didn't back down or buckle. Yeah. Why don't we elect all of them into Congress? Because apparently they can get things done. <laughs> you know, uh, the sad fact is that... Um, that story makes me want makes me want to know more. What happened further? Because this, this is a big story. It's a big deal. But because again, this is a channel that's affiliated with corporate media, they have to condense it down and give a small soundbite of what 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 was really won. And again, Medicare and for all. That's video. unheard of. Yeah. Like, of course, it's unheard of in the United States, the richest country in the world. We can't give health care to our citizens. I mean, if you're with a company or a corporation that does provide some decent benefits. I don't know. For example, when we were with Lee, when I was with Lee Camp for the General Strike Summit, mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned how Ace Hardware was like a, a co-op, and of course, then there's Costco, which is a different kind of company altogether. Mm -hmm. How they have benefits for their workers, and it's a foreign concept where there's at least something to take care of workers. But in the United States as a whole, unions of working class people have been struggling. This is a fantastic victory yeah. for the strikers at John Deere. Um, is it enough? We need to see more unions and other workers do yeah. this. It has to be more than just John Deere, but I think that I'll, I'll send off this story with, here, here, John Deere. Here, here, John Deere workers. Workers. Well, that doesn't yeah. rhyme as much. Okay. John well, Deere is the workers. John Deere is the workers. John Deere is the, uh, John Deere is the people. There you go. And there you go.